just is there and in the poll based question, you know, different vendors take different approaches to the way that they segment their partners, whether that's those metal based tiers um, or points based programs, which look a lot more like loyalty programs. Um, either way, as the channel evolves, obviously those leveling programs need to evolve. So my first question for the panel, Natalia, and I think I'll direct this one to you. Um, could you share your thoughts on why you think leveling or tiering programs are, are so key or so important in today's quite probably more complex partner ecosystem? Yeah, I think that's exactly one of the first reasons, right? Because it, it's getting more complex. Previously, it was maybe not as diverse. Um, you had DISDs, um, resellers, but now we are confronted with, you know, we have distribution partners, tier one, tier two. MSP partners, we have co-delivery partners or service delivery partners, et cetera, and everyone has their own program by itself, right? Uh, and criteria and measurements and KPIs. So it is important that you understand how they all fit together. Is it either or, not every partner is just one of these things, right? You can be a reseller and you can be an MSP partner and a co-delivery partner or just an MSP. Um, so it's uh, it's complex because the partners have the choice to wear multiple hats really in that partner uh, program ecosystem, let's say they can choose and we have the challenge to measure, but also, you know, the ability to say, okay, we differentiate or we have the ability so that you can differentiate and be, you know, driving more uh, value towards your customers by that different segmentation. So I think, yeah. It's, it's really important to have it and, and to make sure that customers also understand what level the partner has in your company. Yeah, that's a, that's a really important point, right? So customers understand actually what those those tiers mean and what that means in terms of what they would get. Um, Kenneth, Dave, anything to, to add to that? Uh, yeah, yeah let's, let's, let's go ahead, Kim. <laughs> Yeah, so, so I might just chime in a little bit, Margaret. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, so, yeah, as Natalia said, the, the ecosystem has certainly evolved over the last, uh, especially the last three years, I would say, compared to what was once three to five partners is now more like 10 to 15 partner types. Natalia touched on a lot of them, but, you know, you throw into the mix then things like influence and referral as well. So then if you think about your overall program, your leveling program has to cater for multiple partner types. It has to cater for multiple go-to-market strategies. And even again, as Natalia alluded to, some of them actually wear multiple hats in that. So, but at the same time, you as a vendor want to win partner mindshare. You want to win their in-customer business. So you must be easy to work with, right? So making it easy for the partner to understand where do they sit in your program? What's the advantage to bringing their in-customer business to you? You know, how do they get to be, a, I'll say a gold or a silver partner, whatever, whatever tiering, names you use and making it easy for them to understand almost instantaneously this is what I have to do to be a gold partner which achieves the maximum discount it gives me the maximum MDF dollars etc so um, you know standing out from the crowd um, equals you know winning partner mindshare equals being easy to do business with and just to add to that uh, kind of the only thing I was going to say is very similarly, I mean, I think it's complex, and I think that that we're it's a balancing act, right? Because you you do have um, you, you you do have a uh, to balance. You have to make it easy for the partners. The partners have to, and the partners also we want we want to make it easy, not only easy for them but relevant. So um, for the different partner types, like you mentioned, influencer, um, the influencer partners maybe they don't even they're not interested in uh, sales training, and and maybe that's not part of your requirements. Uh, they're more interested in how do I integrate this or how do I, how does it work technically? So the requirements and the benefits may change a little bit depending on those partner types, and that's what we've uh, been investigation investigating. But I think it's a balance of relevance and ease of use, and also getting partners to do what we want them to do. Right. So what are you, you know how are you incenting them to to help drive your business? Yeah, exactly. And I think that balancing act of ensuring relevancy, of factoring all the complexity, but then making those programs easy to understand, right? Because you don't want to over-engineer them and that, that simplicity versus relevance challenge, I think, which, which everyone faces, right? 
um, which yeah, leads us nicely. Uh, oh, oh, sorry. Yeah, sorry, Margaret. And to Dave's point, you know, to to get the partners to do the activities that that you wish or want them to do, you know, having that in line with your overall business strategy um, means then you have to try and build some of those levers into your program. So, you know, how many deals do you want to, them to register versus what value those deals are? And depending on the product you sell or service or, or software that you sell, those levers can be very different. So, you know, typically we talk about revenue and, and uh, training, but as vendors evolve into, you know, being pure SaaS players, things like renewal rates are become more important or number of opportunities. So not just one big deal a year to get you to 500 or a million, whatever it is that the threshold is. But I'd prefer if you had 20 deals, not all my eggs in one basket. So the value versus volume criteria in there, et cetera. So building all of those levers in a seamless way into your program. So it's kind of almost uh, invisible or transparent to the partner. So it's easy for them. But then you know, a partner that's just doing a, a referral isn't interested in any of that. So you literally just have to show them what amount of referral business and what gets them to gold is very different than what might get a traditional reseller to gold. How do you define or think about the program requirements that are relevant for today's partners? So Dave, I think, you know, what would be for you um, the key requirements of a modern leveling program? 